I moved to Melbourne when I was about 17 and after a year and a half I started doing a few short jewellery courses. The first day of the first jewellery course I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I met my taxidermy mentor at the same time and started learning taxidermy as well. Um, my taxidermy teacher Rudy was, he was just a retired taxidermist that I met for, through a friend and he offered to teach me. I'd been wanting to learn since I was about 16 and I couldn't find anyone so it was very informal, it was just like a mentorship. So I'd just go out to his house if I found something dead on the road and he'd just take me through the process so he'd do one half and I'd do the other half and we'd kind of go from there. I'm a vegan, so I only use animals that have died of natural causes, so mainly small birds and mice. And I was studying jewellery at the same time, so I'd preserve a mouse, and then it was just kind of like a natural progression for me to put diamonds in its eyes and give it a silver tail and put a brooch back on it. So straight away, like within the first few weeks of making jewellery, I started combining the two things together. And then I think in about 2007, I had a show at Craft Victoria and that's when I kind of flipped it around and I started making taxidermy sculptures and adding jewellery components. Yeah, it was quite liberating because I'd always made jewellery and everything had to be considered to be, you know, durable enough to be worn. And when I started making sculptures, I realised I could actually create to my full potential. I'm quite inspired by the Victorian era and the Victorians were very big into mourning, it was quite fashionable, so when a loved one died they would take a lock of hair and they would turn it into a piece of jewellery or they would have, you know, lockets with photos and they liked to carry reminders around with them and I really liked that, that sentimentality. I get people coming to me wanting me to do stuff with ashes of deceased loved ones, um, hair, occasionally, you know, people come with their children's teeth. They all kind of, you know, in my eyes it's it can be done in a memorial sense, but also in a kind of amuletic or talismanic way as well, I guess, when they're you know, using children's teeth and that sort of thing, when it's, it's not about them dying, but it's symbolising a phase of their life that's over. The main reason behind my work comes from an ethical animal rights viewpoint. So I, want, I don't necessarily want to turn my viewers into vegans, but I want to help them to make the decisions they would make if they were fully educated. So I believe, you know, a lot of the meat and dairy industry, the practices that, that go on are so horrific, but they go on behind closed doors and there's a reason for that because if we knew what went on, we wouldn't partake in it. And so I just want to highlight what actually does go on because I think a lot of people would, would vote differently with their dollar.